Australian reporting period is underway. Hello, I'm Kyle Rudder, and in this week's extra edition of Investor Spotlight, we discuss the results of the companies that have already reported, look ahead to what to expect in the weeks ahead, and analyze the ASX 200 index. The first batch of ASX company results have trickled in with the numbers largely in line with expectations. According to FN Arena's Corporate Results Monitor, eight companies had reported by August 4th, with most results meeting expectations. The noteworthy miss was Rio Tinto, which, as we discussed last week, disappointed investors with a result that revealed a 42.5% decline in year-over-year profits. More importantly, the miner undershot profit estimates, posting a net profit after tax of $5.1 billion against forecasts of $5.6 billion, which reduced its dividend to $1.77 per share. On the other hand, the fund manager Janice Henderson Group appeared to beat estimates for most financial metrics. However, the stock still fell following its results, and brokers have since taken the knife to the company's rating, largely due to the steady fund outflows the business has experienced. The likes of ResMed and Block also reported in recent days and have two disappointed investors with their results. Most of the companies that have already posted results so far this reporting season have been overseas listed. The reporting period kicks up a gear now with the first batch of ASX listed companies to deliver earnings in the week ahead. According to Trading House MPC Markets, approximately 13% of the ASX 300 will report in the week ending August 11th. The highlight of the week will undoubtedly be the full year financials of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. As we previewed last week, the CBA is expected to report a moderation in profits in the second half of the year, but pay out a higher dividend, which will take its full year dividend to $4.33. Meanwhile, Suncorp's results on the same day will attract investor interest and may have broader implications for the financial sector. Last week, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission knocked back ANZ's bid for Suncorp's banking arm. Investors will be attuned to what Suncorp says about the decision and how it might impact its strategic and financial outlook. Expectations for ASX-listed company profits remain low for the reporting period. According to analysis performed by Macquarie Research, earnings per share ought to decline by 0.4% across the market. However, that's predominantly due to a drop in resource sector profits as commodity prices moderate after surging in 2022. Meanwhile, banks are forecast to post relatively robust earnings growth and industrials are tipped to grow earnings over the course of the financial year 2023. More broadly, investors will remain dialed into companies sensitive to domestic demand, especially consumer discretionary stocks. Fears about softer consumption persist as the effects of the RBA's unprecedentedly aggressive monetary policy tightening flow through the Australian economy. The ASX 200 has fallen in the past week, ahead of reporting season and a seasonally weak period for global equities. The return of volatility in global bond markets has spilled into equities too, with valuations adjusting to higher yields across the globe. Catalyzed by strong US data, increased treasury issuance in the US and Fitch's downgrade of the US credit rating, the 30-year Australian bond yields was pushed to a fresh cycle high near 4.5% last week. Based on the trading activity of IG's clients, sentiment is mixed towards the ASX 200. The Australia 200 boasts a modest net short position of 52%, suggesting that traders are indecisive about the path forward for the market. Despite the recent flurry, the ASX 200 remains range-bound in the long term. The market met resistance at 7480-7500 and has slipped back below support resistance at 7400. Major downside support appears to be around 7050.